I started out with five weathers from a good friend who was moving to California and took those spin it was called a spinner's flock because each of the weathers was a different animal a Lincoln, a Tunis, um, a Corydale, and some other breeds and those weathers many many years ago I think it was oh, maybe 15 now 15 years ago um, were the foundation of my flock and then I started getting ewes. I got Wensleydale ewes from Neil Kentner and then I brought along some, I got a Corydale bottle lamb from a really good friend in the spinner's flock and Corydale is a wonderful fleece. It's very, it's close to um, fine. It's a medium fine fleece, fine being merino. <clears throat> and I discovered that as I started processing and mixing my rovings with mohair and angora rabbit and I buy alpaca from friends and llama from friends and mix it in with the wool. People started to ask me for a finer fleeced wool and I have a tendency also to spin a finer fleeced wool only because my customers ultimately like that. It feels really good against their skin. Fleece is determined by micron count and a fine fleece is between 21 and 18, 18 and 21 and then above that is called medium fleece. And then you've got your coarse fleeces, which are absolutely gorgeous and very um, lustrous and beautiful. I mean, that's the Lincolns and the Wensleydales. And they are a dream to spin, especially if you're a first-time spinner, because it felt really well and quickly. So we have the Corydale and the Merino, and I have lots of Corydale Wensleydale crosses because it's a wonderful um, medium-fine fleece that is produced and it grows. Um, Wensleydales you have to shear twice a year because the locks grow so long. You can get, they're the locks that are used for Santa Claus beards, Cotswolds and Wensleydales. And so you shear twice a year and then you get this really nice wonderful wool. So I kept all the ewes that were crosses and found homes for the weathers. This year we bought Zar and he's a merino ram, a black registered natural color ram. He's absolutely gorgeous with these nice curly horns. He's gorgeous. And he looks like a little miniature buffalo is what he reminds me of. And um, he's out there with 16 girlfriends. And I look forward to the spring when we have 100% merino, uh, merino lambs. So we'll have Quaidale, <clears throat> Wensleydale crossed with merino. We'll have Quaidale merino. We also will have a blue face Lester Merino. So it's just going to be this wonderful mix of spinners roving off of the backs of these animals. I started to have it produced into um, mill spun yarn and Zeilinger's Woolen Mill in Frankenmuth does a fabulous job and they'll do everything for you. Um, you send it raw and they'll um, <clears throat> spin it, you know clean it, spin it into yarn, then they'll make, um, they'll separate it into skeins for you so you don't have to do that, and then it comes home in boxes of this beautiful, gorgeous, raw, white wool, or sometimes I throw gray in and black so I could get a gray wool back or gray yarn back, and um, then I spend weeks upon weeks dyeing it, and it's called hand painting, and I, it's a secret. It's my trade secret. I won't tell you exactly how I do it unless you take a class from me. But the outcome is absolutely fantastic and it's very inexpensive compared to my hand spun yarn. I sell hand spun yarn for $10 an ounce and that means you end up paying about almost $300 for hand spun yarn if you want to make a sweater. If you want to buy the mill spun yarn, it's $16 a skein and that's about $160 to make a sweater from Michigan wool, grown in Michigan, hand painted, and unique, one of a kind. Mm -hmm.